Welcome, welcome, welcome to our home buyer seminar. We are so glad that you are here and we are so excited to educate you about the home buying process from start to finish. My name is Amanda Grothews. I'm a local real estate expert. And I'm Shawna Verrett, a local mortgage expert. And so before we get started, we just want to do a little bit about ourselves. We want to get, you know, you to get to know us and eventually we want to get to know you. So, um, Again, I'm Amanda, born and raised in San Antonio, Texas. I currently reside in Bernie. So after the birth of my first son, we moved out here to kind of be closer to family. I've also lived in Medina Lake, Alma Heights, Helotus. So kind of been all over, much like Sana, as she'll tell you. Um, so I really know this city. I, my mom was an interior designer, and so I always went with her to look at homes and just pick out colors and everything like that. And so that really um, spurred on my love for real estate. And it just seemed to be a natural fit once I graduated college. Uh, a little bit else about me, I'm a boy mom of two little boys. They are absolutely crazy. We are outside all the time. Um, you can usually find us fishing at any body of water. And so now I'll turn it over to Sean and she can tell you a little bit about herself. Thank you. So I was born and raised in San Antonio and I currently reside in Bernie as well. And I, my mom was in the military, my dad's a structural engineer, so from an early age I got to be hands-on with all kinds of stuff, going to, to work with him and seeing how things were built and, you know, using your hands. And so um, in their spare time they would actually remodel houses. And so I got to remodel those houses with them and it became investment properties. And so it really brought my love to the housing industry. And um, I, I'm right where I'm at, I'm supposed to be right now. And I have four beautiful kids. And we are the same way. We love being outside. We have horses and chickens and dogs and cats. We're animal lovers. Um, my youngest little girl will tell you that she's going to be a veterinarian. And um, I think that proves true every day. So now we're going to talk about the different roles in the transaction. So I have a role, Shauna has a role, and you as the buyer have a role as well. So a little bit about the realtor's role, my job, is I am here to educate you and make you a knowledgeable home buyer. So that is kind of what we're all about is the education and um, just explaining the process. We want you to, to at the end, not only have a beautiful home, but also be a knowledgeable home buyer and a home buyer and home owner. So we want you to know all the process the whole way. Um, I'm also here to negotiate on your behalf, no matter what. So I'm always going to put your best interests first. And I will work with myself and Shauna to make sure that we communicate with you daily and we get your, your, the best home for you um, that fits within your budget. So I will also be giving you a comprehensive home buying packet. And so this is just kind of for you to refer back to. We, of course, will explain everything along the way, but we're also going to, um, to give you information too. So we'll give you a packet that you can roll, refer back to, take notes, all that good stuff. So a few things in this packet is I will have a section for notes that when we actually go look at homes, you can take notes on all the properties. And so when we go back and we kind of discuss price and we want to talk with Shauna, like, hey, we like this one, go a little more in depth. You know, we can, we can give her all those notes. We can refer back to the notes. Um, we'll also talk about A to Z of the home buying process, the entire, um, every step of the way. So every time we hit a new, a new uh, milestone, you can look back at that process and be like, okay, this is what we're doing next. I'm ready for it. I'm excited about it. And then also um, a list of vendors. So there's a lot of different people involved in transactions, not just Shauna, not just myself, not just you. There's a lot of people. So we will have a list of trusted vendors um, from inspectors um, to repair people to home warranty companies, everything that will kind of get you um, through the transaction and you can have the assurance of knowing that we have worked with these people, we recommend these people and you will be in good hands. Absolutely. And so me coming in as your lender, it is really important that my role is to educate you and be there every step of the way. I provide you with a comprehensive financial packet so that we've talked about what your interest rate's gonna be. We're working with real numbers, making sure that these are for you and tailored to you. Um, we, don't, we don't work with you know made up numbers. It's we pull credit, we pull your debt to income, and this is what is for you. So make sure that that packet's together since you're understanding what you're getting. I always keep your file up to date and keep the process going so that Amanda and I are in constant communication. It's important for that communication to be open between all parties and we keep the role just moving along. So when you need that pre-qualification letter, we have it there for you. 
Okay, so now we've covered my role and Shauna's role, and we just kind of want to talk about a little bit about your role as the home buyer. So we just ask you that you keep all appointments. Um, you know, if you tell us you're going to meet us somewhere or we have a phone call scheduled, we respect your time, just respect ours as well. Um, also loyalty. So we are dedicated to serving you. That's what we love to do. That's why we're in this industry. We have big service hearts. Um, so just, you know, stick with us. I know things might get frustrating at times or you might get discouraged, but don't worry. Um, that's part of the process. We are here to make it as smooth as, as possible. So just stick with us. Trust us. That's all we ask of you. Yeah, absolutely. The trust is a big one. Trust that we're looking out for your best interest because that's that's what we're here for. We're for you. We're looking out for your best interest and what's going to benefit you the most. And so um, I know a lot of times little people come in from the outside and start giving you advice and they don't know your situation and their situation is completely different than yours. Mm -hmm. So Amanda and I are definitely here to work for you and with you. Yeah, so just like she was saying, I mean, everything is catered specifically to your situation. So when we're um, giving you advice and when we're taking you through the process, it's, it's because we are doing it because of where you're at, what you need, um, and it's just designed for you. So another thing that um, we need to keep in mind that your role is, is just have fun, guys. Um, this is an exciting process. We are so thrilled for you. Um, and so just enjoy it. That, that's a you know, major role that we ask um, because the more you have fun and the more you enjoy it, the smoother the transaction will go. I, you know, we can both attest to that. Um, and another thing is just let us know. If you're going out of town, um, you know, if you're going to be somewhere where you can't answer phone calls, anything like that, let us know. Because um, there is a lot of stuff going on. We're going to be calling, emailing, everything a lot. And so um, if you can't get to the phone, it's absolutely okay. Just let us know that. Yeah, in this, pro in this process, it's also fun for us. It's fun to us for us to watch and see the excitement that you have because that feeds us too. And so that's that's part of our servant's heart. So like we like to see you having a good time doing this and, and just relaying those messages back and forth and letting us know how you feel about things and, um, and asking any questions to us. It's, you know, it really brings us all together. So, so now we're just gonna kind of cover up why it's important to use a local realtor. So first of all, you need someone that knows the area. Um, I have been here my whole life. I have from down from Floresville up to New Braunfels. I have serviced all those areas. I've helped clients in all those areas. And it's really important because um, property taxes change from area to area. The style of home, the age of home, the price points of homes, I mean, they change not only just from area to area, but sometimes in one community, there's going to be um, a select plan and a platinum plan. And those are two totally different price points. And it's important that your realtor knows that. So that's one major reason to work with a local realtor. So like I mentioned earlier, my goal is to um, make sure that you're happy, have a smooth process and to educate you. So you need a realtor that is full time, who is going to do continuing education, who is going to, to sit down and actually read through every document with you and who will take the time to educate you because that, again, this is so important. It's what it's all about. Um, you know, another thing is, so I'm always doing continuing education. I know Shauna is as well. Um, to make sure that you get the best deal on a home, I have a certification. It's called the Pricing Strategy Advisor. So when I'm going out there, I can use this on the buying or the selling side. So when I'm pulling comparable properties, when I'm looking to see if, um, you know, what the target price is that we go in, I, I have training on this. And so I'm never going to tell you to overpay, um, I, I you know, I'm, I know how to price homes, I know where we should go in at, and I know how to craft that, that offer for you. And so when you pull those comparables, you actually take the house that they're looking at, and you take that comparable, and you actually say, okay, this one has three bedrooms, this one has four bedrooms, you actually sit there and figure out the exact price, right? Exactly, so that's something that we do. So, um, you know, not, there are no two homes that are alike. And so we have to make adjustments on those homes. So um, when we're looking at a comparable property, say this one, again, like she said, this one has a three bedroom, this has a four bedroom, but it's almost the same square footage, almost the same upgrades, everything like that, then I can adjust the price to make sure um, that we are, again, hitting that target price and I never want you to overpay. We always want you to stay within your means. Um, and so that's, that's one of the roles of having a local realtor. 
So that's another thing is having a local realtor is I have local partners. So I have Shauna as my loan officer. I have inspectors I've worked with. I have a whole team behind me of people that I've worked with personally. I've shaken their hands. Um, I know they're going to do a good job. And in realtors from out of town, or if you just call, you know, your 1-800, realtor number then you won't have that and, and working as a team is so important to make sure that the transaction flows in that um you know we have a smooth process from start to finish absolutely and and being your local lender that's important we build our team we we meet people every day from title to homeowner insurance agents to other realtors and stuff but we form our team and that's who we work with because we know that they're going to do right by our customers we know that they're going to get the job done and we typically build our team with people that are like us so you know we know they're going to explain to you what you need to know and educate you on on their end and not just leave you kind of in the dark going i have no idea what's going on and so as your lender being a local lender it's important i'm different than you know online lenders or banks and the fact that i know the market I know what, you know, if Amanda is making a, a contract for you, I know what, you know, closing costs and stuff you can ask for to get that deal. I also go the extra mile and as far as I call the seller's agent mm -hmm. and I let them know how strong my clients are. I let them know that this person is pre-qualified and I've actually pre-approved them. I have all their documents and they're ready to go so that we can make closing. And I'm not, I'm there from the first point of contact to after closing. I, I become your, your um, home loan advisor. You know, you'll call me if you need a refi or you have a friend that needs something. We, mm -hmm. we don't just fall off the face of the earth. We're still here to help you. So another thing about being your local lender is I have a continuum of service, meaning that I have my processor in my office, my loan assistant, and my underwriter and closer. They're all the same people for all my loans, so I am in constant contact with them. Um, a lot of places you go to, it changes people on the back end all the time. And so it's a different processor, it's a different underwriter every time you get a new document in. Whereas with, with me, your local lender, we get it, we call you and say, hey, we're missing this one document or we need a verification of something. And you send it to us and we can just send it right over to processing or right over to underwriting. And um, the do your loan doesn't have to go back into the process. It's already there. And we just have to send that one document over, which is huge. So. And I want to highlight on something else about using a local lender like Shauna. And, and honestly, not all local lenders do this, but I will tell you from personal experience, the real estate transaction, we are constantly working. And so if I'm out showing houses to you at eight o'clock at night and we find the one and I need a pre-approval, guess what? If you're working with an 800 um, lender or a bank, we're not gonna get that pre-approval. We can't submit that offer until the next morning and we might miss out on that home. And Shauna is there, she gets that to us and not only does she just get you a regular pre-approval, she gets one specific to that house. So it's really important to have the pre-approval with the actual amount of the house that you're buying. You don't want them to know that you are pre-qualified for more than what the house is because guess what? Then they're going to try to bump that price up. Um, and so that's something that she does. She's amazing to work with. And that's just one of those things about working with a local lender that you will not get anywhere else. Absolutely. And so thank you for that. I appreciate yeah. that. Um, we actually have a little pop quiz for you. And um, who pays for the uh, real estate fees? Does anyone know? If you know, put the answer in the chat box below. We'll see kind of what people write. Um, and drum roll, please. The answer is the seller. You don't pay for a dime. Exactly, guys. So I'm here to represent you. I'm here to show you houses. We're here to take you through the process and you're not paying the commission. This seller is. So there's no reason not to, buy, to use a buyer's agent. Um, we protect you. We negotiate on your behalf and we're free. So a lot of times people ask, well, I want, or say, I want the perfect mm -hmm. house. I hear it all the time. Amanda, does a perfect house exist? It doesn't guys. I mean, I don't care even if you're building a new construction, your custom home, I guarantee in a month you're gonna be like, oh, I forgot this, or I should have put this in there, or, you know, guys, it doesn't exist. But we do say that the 85 to 90% rule, so if you can find a house that's 85 to 90% within your perfect dream home, guys, that's the one. Um, because you will not find that perfect house. I wish there was one out there for everyone, um, but there's not, especially if you're buying pre-owned. So when we are first starting the home search 
process. Um, you know, like I said, we just talked about the 85 to 90% home. So I kind of like, I call this the funnel process. So there's different types of homes that we can look at. We can look at new construction for sale by owner, off-market deals, and then homes that are on the MLS. And it's my job to make sure that you don't miss out on any homes that might be in this funnel that fit your criteria. So what we do is once we look at all these homes, we really narrow down what your specific criteria is. Do you need four bedrooms? Do you need three bedrooms? Do you need a large backyard? Um, do you need an office? What do you need? So we're going to figure out what your criteria is and what area you wanna live in and narrow it down. So we'll narrow it down then to homes that I will email you and we'll look at those online and we'll say, okay, I really like the aesthetic of this one. I like the yard in this one. Um, and then from there, once we've looked at the ones online and we've narrowed it down a little more in our funnel, then we will drive by. So we can drive by and say, hey, I really like the front of this house. Um, I like the neighborhood. It's really important to, to assess the neighborhood to make sure, because you will be in this house typically a while. You know, when you buy a house, it's not a, a one year, two year thing like a car might be. You're gonna be in there probably three to 10, maybe even 30 years, you don't know. Um, and so it's really important to, to know your surroundings. How close are you to an HEB? Um, how, you know, where's your, your child's school at? Do you like the neighborhood? Is everyone keeping up with their yards? It's really important. So once we drive by, then we will pick the ones further down in our funnel process that we actually want to go in. And so the goal is kind of having a rolling top three homes that we're going to go look at and that are in contingency to put an offer in. Um, and so I also like to sit down with you and really break down why you need what you need. So if you tell me that you need a four bedroom home, I'll be like, okay, do you need four bedrooms and a playroom or four bedrooms and an office? Or do you really need the four bedrooms? Cause that will change how I search for houses. Or when you say you want a large kitchen, is it because you want a commercial size kitchen because you love cooking? Or really do you want your whole family to gather in there? Is that the, the heart of the home? Um, that will again change what houses I send you, what we look for. And, um, and so that's just kind of what I do to, to really break down your specific needs and make sure that the houses I'm sending you are only the houses that will, that are, have that high potential and might be the one for you. And yeah, when they're going through these homes, it's important to take the evaluation sheet with you. And this is something that Amanda will provide to you or I can provide to you. Um, and you evaluate those homes on a scale of one to 10 and what makes this house a 10. And you've got to you figure out what makes that house a 10 for you and pick the top three houses and keep them on your list and you know, rate each house. And if it doesn't, if you drive up, some of them you drive up to, and man can tell you, you drive up to them and you go, this is not the house for me. And you turn around and you drive right out and you don't even walk in the house. And so scratch that one off the list. It obviously didn't make it. Others you walk in and you evaluate and just, you know, evaluate one to 10, see where, see where it is on that list and always have a top three, have a top three to look at, um, to choose from. And some questions you can ask yourself are, can I see myself in this house? Can I see my family in this house? And if Amanda were to call you tomorrow and tell you that the house sold or it's off the market, how would that make you feel? Um, would you would you be like, eh, not a big deal? Or would it be like, oh man, that's, that was really the house I wanted. So those are some questions to ask yourself. And Amanda can walk you and through that as you're there. And um, she does a great job pointing out, you know, the best in the house and some of the cons in the house because not every house is perfect like we've said exactly and so why we're going through this evaluation sheet um i like she's saying i'm going to ask you when we're in the house because if if i ask you hey if this house sells today and you would be devastated that is the house i'm going to go home i'm going to pull comparable properties on and we are going to write an offer um, and so it's just really good to to go through this sheet with each home and um you know we can always call shauna see what payments would be per each home in that top three. And that way you really are making an informed decision when we write up that offer. Absolutely. And it's really important to have a realtor like this who who can listen to you and recognizes like when that house is one of your top contenders and who will go home immediately and get things going. Um, you know, Amanda doesn't wait around for you to call and say, okay, I think I'm ready now. She goes, she knows, she knows you well enough that she's reading you and she's able to get that going right away for you. So 
as y'all are doing that, as y'all are talking, you've probably already talked to me about your financing and we've already gotten everything going. And so some of the things that I talk about up front are your fees up front. Mm -hmm. When you uh, start making a contract on a house, you do have to have some funds up front as far as like your earnest money, which is 1% of the house price. Mm -hmm. And you have to have your option period, which is typically, correct me if I'm wrong, $10 per day. Yes. So it's come, it, they're typically 10 day option periods, so mm -hmm. it comes out to $100. And then we have inspections and appraisals. And inspections will run you four to six hundred dollars, and appraisals are about five ten that you pay up front. And so those are just your upfront fees. And it's important to remember that the earnest money, the one percent, actually goes at the end towards your closing costs. Yeah, and so it's really good to have a loan officer like Sean who's going to sit down because a lot of people, they think, okay, I have my down payment, I'm ready to buy a house, right? And it's like, wait, 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 there's a few other things that you'll need um, up front and she will reiterate it, I will reiterate, we will constantly be telling you what you need so that you're not um, surprised when a fee comes up or um, you're like, oh my gosh, I just, I bought something in and I needed that money for my earnest money or my appraisal. Um, and that's huge. Yep. I'm glad she brought that I was going to try to segue in, so she, <laughs> she took my cue. Um, so when you start this process, we have already pulled your credit, so we see exactly what's on your credit um, right then. It's really important, and I send you an email, and we talk about it on the phone. But I will tell you 10 times, too. <laughs> it's so important. It happens all the time. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, it's very important that during this process, you don't go out and open new credit cards. You don't go out and finance furniture. We know you're excited that you're, you know, possibly buying this new house and you want to start furnishing it with new things, but we ask you to wait. Don't buy that new furniture. Don't go, don't go open a Lowe's credit card and start buying, you know, yard, mm -hmm. you know, stuff and don't go out and buy a new car. Um, we just ask that you keep paying all your bills on time. Make sure that you don't charge up huge amounts of money on your credit card. Just use them as normal, pay them as normal. Um, if we've actually talked about your credit and things that you need to pay down, then we ask that you do keep those paid down um, during the process. Because any little thing with your credit that you add new credit on or you close accounts out or something, that pops up at the end and that can actually delay your closing and you could actually lose the contract mm -hmm. on your house. And so we ask that during the, the whole contract, it's only, it's only 30 to 45 days depending on your loan program. It's only 30 to 45 days. We just ask that you kind of keep everything steady. Um, don't open accounts, don't close accounts, keep everything paid on time and don't transfer large amounts of money. Mm -hmm. um, money that we can't, we can't track, don't transfer it into your bank account. Yeah, so, so if you, um, you know, if, if mom wants to give you a $5,000 birthday gift in cash, Guys, just not right now. Um, that's money that it's not traceable and it's, yeah. it really slows down the process. And so speaking of financing, Shauna is going to kind of cover, cover the, um, the types of loans. So there's different types of loans that you can qualify for. Um, and that kind of changes what you, you know, the little amount you can put down or, um, you know, up to the typical 20%. So yeah, I'll and let you go ahead and cover that. You. And so we have a lot of loan programs. Um, your typical loan programs that you hear of are your FHA, your conventional, VA, and then USDA. And so a lot of times people with um, FHA, this is a government funded loan. And so we have um, a minimum down payment of 3.5%. Now, if you are married, both parties have to be on this loan. Um, you, can't, you can't just use one individual. We have to use both individuals. Um, sorry, the couple together, not individuals, but we have to use both, both of you on this loan. And like I said, as low as 3.5%, it does have uh, PMI. And this is for the life of the loan. It's uh, PMI does not, it covers the lender. It's something that you have to pay. It's just a small amount. It's not, it's not a large amount. It's just a small amount. So I'm gonna start you for a second. And so we use acronyms a lot. So let's go ahead and PMI. Go ahead and, and take it back a step and um, go ahead and tell them what PMI is. So that's your mortgage insurance. And so that is, it covers, it's your mortgage insurance and it covers the lender if you default on your loan. Mm -hmm. And it's just a small amount um, added monthly and it's not, it doesn't change anything huge and we'll, you know, you'll know the amount uh, when we go over your loan estimate and everything, you'll know what it is. And then we have conventional loans. Conventional loans, if you're a first time home buyer, can be as little as 3% down. There is a little class, like the first time home buyers class that you have to take, nothing, nothing crazy. And um, 
that one, you you have mortgage insurance. I'll, I'll use the whole mortgage insurance. <laughs> um, you have mortgage insurance up until you pay that loan down 22%. So you have a 78% loan to value. And um, so once you pay that loan up to uh, off 22%, then your mortgage insurance goes away. And so that's the same thing. That is, you know, covers the, um, it covers the, the lender and it's just a, it's a ratio that we, we calculate out and I explain it to you during our, our, uh, our meetings and I show you what it is. If you are a second time home buyer and using a conventional loan, it's 5% down, that's the minimum. And using a conventional loan, it does not have to be the couple on the loan. This mm -hmm. loan, you can, you only, if it's only the husband or only the wife, um, or you have boyfriend, girlfriend, you, you know, just one of you, we only have to pull your credit and put them on the loan. Um, there's a lot that goes into it. You know, I could sit here all day and explain, like yeah. we could do this scenario yeah. or that scenario, there's, but um, these are just kind of general across the board. With the conventional loan, you always hear put 20% down and you don't have the mortgage insurance. And that's true. Mm -hmm. um, so you can put 20% down and you get rid of that mortgage insurance. And we just, you know, it's just your taxes and your insurance and princ uh, your principal and interest. With that 20%, when you put the 20% down, I just said taxes and insurance. If you put 20% down, you actually have the option of paying your taxes and insurance outside of your mortgage. With every other loan, you pay it wrapped into one. So it's called escrow, your money, it's, it's escrowed in. And so when you put the 20% down, you actually have that option of just paying your principal and interest payment and then paying your taxes and insurance outside of your mortgage. And so when we're talking about um, taxes, we're talking about property taxes. Yes. So um, here in Texas, we have, we have property taxes and so um, that's something that we have to factor in because unless you're putting that 20% down, that's going to be in your monthly payment. And so that was another thing is all across the city, there's different, there's different prices of property taxes. And so that's something that before we even write an offer, we're going to contact Sean and be like, Hey, this is the property. This is the price we want to put. These are the property taxes. Okay. What might our monthly mortgage? And again, it's an estimate, but she'll be able to give you a pretty, um, pretty close estimate of what your your monthly mortgage will be with those taxes included unless you're doing the 20% down conventional. Right. And the taxes are different for every house. Mm -hmm. And so um, a lot of people know about BCAD, that's the appraisal district. You can get online and look it up and you look up the specific house. Um, we always go off the non-exempt. So we go off the taxes without exemptions because just because Amanda gets an exemption on her house doesn't mean when I buy it, I'm gonna get those exemptions. Mm -hmm. So we always, so only if you look at that, we always go off of the um, non-exempt taxes. That's how we calculate them in for you. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so um, we have covered a lot in I'll this short VA. Well, well, we can cover that if you're, v if you're VA, we'll talk. <laughs> yeah, and same with USDA. Yes. Um, you don't get very many USDA loans in this area. That is a rural loan, um, and VA is a whole nother, yeah. Ball game itself. We could talk for a long time about VA, but we are military city USA. We love our vets. We love serving our vets. So, um, you know, if, if you want to learn more, go ahead and type in the chat box, write your email, phone number, whatever you'd like to provide, and we will reach out to you and talk to you specifically about the VA loan. But FHA yes. and convention are typically the two that you see um, the most. So, absolutely. like I said, we have covered a lot of information. Everyone take a breath, relax. Yes. We are going to, yes, yes, we are going to take a pause and just let you ask questions in the chat box. Um, we want to see, you know, if, if we forgot something or if you're confused about something. So go ahead and type everything up and we will either answer um, verbally or we'll answer, um, we'll, we'll write back to you or we'll cover it at the end and we'll reach out to you separately depending on the specific question. Absolutely. Thank you guys. Okay guys, welcome back. So we just threw a lot at you. So we wanted you to have time to process, ask questions, um, and just take a breather, right? Because um, we are about to throw a lot more at you. Yes. Um, so we're gonna talk about actually crafting the offer and um, the process after that. So we've just started um, with the financing and finding your dream home. Now let's talk about what happens when we find it. And, um, and so we'll just roll into 
The first part is writing up an offer. So San Antonio has been in a housing shortage now for a few years. And so a lot of times we're seeing that um, there's multiple offers, homes are going off the market in a few days. Um, and so it's really important to write an offer that's mutually beneficial for you and the seller. And I know that kind of sign sounds kind of funny you know you, you want to have the best offer for yourself but in order to get that offer um, accepted we have to write it up to where the seller agrees us to and not all the time you know not every house is going to be a multiple offer situation but when it is it's important that we write that offer up um again to, to get it accepted and we can do that many ways you don't have to ask or to offer over price. You can, um, but there's other ways. So we can, we can change the contingencies. So um, say we have a financing contingency that we um, approve, we get approved financing in 21 days. We can shorten that or we can take that out. We can shorten the option period. Typically it's 10 days, but we can do it more between five and seven days. You can also offer to pay more than $10 a day. That is always an option. Um, you can do things like Shauna will go above and beyond and call the actual agent and tell them how qualified you are. Yes. As long as you have all your docs in, I can absolutely call the agent and, you know, talk you up and tell them how strong your application is and that you're a serious buyer. And this will help, help on your end and it helps out Amanda and stuff and that we're all talking. And so we can also do things like um, we can shorten our time. So say it takes, we have on there, it takes 45 days um, with Shauna's blessing. We can change that to 30 days. Um, we can also reduce our closing costs. So closing costs are something that it's very typical for a buyer to ask the seller to help with some of their closing costs. Um, and Shauna can kind of go through that more with you of, of how much your closing costs will be. And then we kind of determine from there what, how much closing costs we want to ask for. So you can ask for no closing costs. You can ask for only 1,000, maybe 500. Um, we can also have them, it, again, it's very standard for the seller to pay for one year of warranty. We can, uh, we don't have to ask for that. So there's a lot of different things that we can do to make sure that your offer looks very attractive and presentable to the seller. Absolutely. And so when we were talking about the 30 and 45 days, this is your closing period. The 30 and 45 day closing period is from the time that you put in your contract to the time that we close. Um, I close loans in 30 days or less for your typical FHA and conventional loans. If we're doing something like a down payment assistance program, we'll ask for that 45 days. Now understand that we ask for 30 days and 45 days, but we typically close earlier than that. And so, but we don't want to say, hey, we'll close in 21 days and then come back and say- It's 22 days. Say 22 days, yeah. exactly. Because then we have to amend the contract, we have mm -hmm. to, you know. So it's easier just to, 30 days is standard, and we'll let everybody know, I'll be in contact with all parties, and I'll let everybody know that we can close earlier, and, and we typically will and do. And so, yeah, and so I was just gonna jump in. This is an on or before date. So if we get the clear to close at 21 days, and the contract's written up for 30, guys, we're closing at 21 days. We wanna get you into the house as fast as possible. We're excited for you. Um, so just remember, we're gonna update you every step of the way and make sure that um, if we can close sooner, we will definitely do that. Absolutely. And the other thing is closing dates, sometimes the seller or the buyer say, hey, we need it longer than 45 days. And that's something that you and Amanda will talk about and y'all will come up with the date and then y'all will just tell me. And so, and she'll clear with me that, hey, can we close in this time? And um, there's other things to do like lease backs and y'all all go over oh, that. <laughs> y'all, it's way too much for right now, right? So Amanda will go over all of that with you as far as if you do a lease back and yeah, all of that good stuff. If, if you know, guys, again, we, we ask back to the beginning what your role is. We just ask for communication. So if you need something, um, I will try everything in my power to make it happen. Same with Shauna. You just have to let us know and please don't let us know the day before it needs to happen. Right. Um, you know, there's a lot of parties that need to sign the contract that need to to agree to the different changes. And so it does take a little bit of negotiation in working with the other the other side of the party to make that stuff happen. But we certainly will, again, we'll always try to, um, to advocate for your best needs. So we were talking about closing costs a little earlier. So there's closing costs on either side. There's the um, buyer's closing costs and there's the seller's closing costs. So I'm gonna have Shauna go over um, a few things that the buyers typically pay for on their closing costs. And then I will go over what the sellers typically pay for. So I'm gonna to talk to you about some of the closing costs for the buyer's side. 
these closing costs would include uh, like lenders fees and things like that. We don't actually charge lenders fees. We have a flat fee and this covers your underwriting fee, your processing fee, your application fee. And so we don't actually charge that percentage where some other places do. And so for the buyer's closing costs, that would be um, our flat fee plus the appraisal, which is typically paid outside of closing. So um, you pay a price outside of closing for your appraisal, and then there's just a little bit that's added in for closing fees um, for the buyer. And um, a lot of times we quote you everything because we wanna give you the worst case scenario. And so we quote you for um, surveys and title and um, all of that when we don't, when that actually gets thrown back over to the seller. And so um, some other things on the buyer's side are the, uh, cre the credit report. The credit report that we pulled at the very beginning, that will also be in there. It's just a small amount. Um, these are all line items on the loan estimates, on the closing, est uh, the closing documents. I go over these line by line, mm -hmm. and I will, uh, when we first start the loan, I will actually give you an uh, initial cost worksheet, and we will go line by line, and we'll talk about what each of them are, and which ones are typically taken out and sent over to the seller's side, and so that you have a better understanding of what you're paying for. So that is what the buyer pays, which is what we're more interested in, since this is a home buying seminar, but I'm going to cover a few things that the um, seller typically pays for, just again, to keep you educated. So the seller, like our pop quiz says, pays all of the real estate, the commission. So they will pay the 6% commission, three to the buyer, three to the selling side. And they also pay for the owner's title policy. They'll pay for the HOA transfer. They'll pay for their entire um, loan payoff. So if they have anything left on their mortgage, they would have to pay that off at the end. Um, they will pay for, typically pay for survey. They can pay for um, repairs if anything needs to be done. Um, if we need a mobile notary for any reason, um, you know, they can pay for that. And so those are just a few things. There's, there's a few more, but that's just a few things that the sellers do cover um, that the buyers don't have to worry about. And so, okay, we have covered you found your house, we wrote up the offer. Um, now, during the first 10 days, we've mentioned a few times, we are now in the option period. And so this is a period where you can, um, you can go look at the house again, we're going to get inspections done, and we're going to negotiate repairs. So why do we have an inspection? Why do we pay to have an inspector come out there? You absolutely don't have to. I do want to preface that. You do not have to, but I highly recommend you have an inspector and you look at that inspection report. So what that does is it make it looks at the major components of the house. And so if there is any defects, um, if the roof is having issues, the AC, any of those major things, and a lot of small things, the inspector will um, note it on the inspection report and just say, you know, please have a structural engineer come out or please have a roofer come out. Because remember, they um, are broad umbrella. They know a little bit about everything, but they are not a specialist. So they always tell you to refer out to a specialist. And so I always tell my clients, it is their job to point out every little thing that's wrong with the home. Guys, do not let this scare you. Um, you know, I'll sit down with you and, and reiterate this, but if you're buying a pre-owned home, even if you're buying a new construction home, there's going to be little minor issues um, and it's nothing to worry about. And so what we will do is once we look at the inspection report together, we will sit down and we'll see if we would like to ask the seller for any repairs. Um, a lot of times, you know, if there's a roof issue, most likely it's under warranty, we can ask them to have that covered. If, um, you know, some of the outlets that are near water are not GFCI outlets, then guess what? We can ask them to change those out, you know? And so that's something, it's a case-by-case -case basis, and it's also what's important to you. So what's important to me might not be in a necessary repair um, to you. Maybe you want the window screens replaced, something like that. Um, and so we'll just kind of sit down and go through all those and make sure that um, that you're happy with the repairs that are going to be done on, on the house. So, while well, y'all are getting the inspections done, I'm on the back end ordering appraisal and everything. But before I order that appraisal, I have entered y'all's address that y'all are buying for the home that you're buying into the computer system, and I've sent out your loan estimates. 
and these are just initial loan estimates. And so it, the figures on them are totally off right now. It's just that we have a three day window that we have to get these out to you for you mm -hmm. to sign. Um, you're basically, you're signing the application that you put in with me. Um, we're going over, you know, this, you are definitely going under contract for this house and taking out a loan with us. And so um, we'll go over some of the fees then, but we, you know, I will reiterate throughout the whole process, those are just estimates and things will change along the way and you will always be apprised of those changes. I will, I will always keep you informed of them. And um, so once, you know, I'm also collecting do updated documents, sometimes you don't find that house within 30 days. So I'm going to need updated bait statements or updated pay stubs. And so we're diligently working on the back end with your loan. It's getting pushed to processing and processing is then pushing it to underwriting. And so there's a lot of moving parts on the mm -hmm. back end while you feel like you're just sitting there. You're not. We're actually we're actually working on the back end with you or for you. And so um, Amanda and I are still going back and forth. And one thing I do is I every Tuesday I'll call you and give you little updates of where your file is in the, pro in the process. And I'll call Amanda and let her know where the file is in the process so that nobody's you know blindsided, nobody has any questions. Mm -hmm. And by all means, if there's any questions that Amanda has between those those Tuesdays, she's calling me. And yeah. I'm, you know, yeah, we are in constant communication, yeah, guys. Absolutely. And so um, same with you. If there's any questions, you're you're calling me, you're texting me, you're emailing me, whatever, but you you can guarantee that I will be calling to update you on your file the way all the way through. Now that she's kind of touched on that, I'm going to um, I'm going to backtrack a little bit because we are still in that option period, right? And so we discussed the the um, inspection, but what we didn't we didn't talk about is your option fee and your earnest money. I know you've heard us talk about that a few times, but this is when that's essential. So when we sign that contract, we really need to get that money within 48 hours to the title company and to the um, the seller. So your earnest money, the check will be written out to the title company. Don't worry, I will call you and I will tell you exactly what that amount is and who to write it out to. And same thing with your option fee. However many days our option fee is, times that by 10 typically, and that will be the amount for our option period. Uh, it's usually $100 and that will be written out to the seller. Again, I will call you and I'll let you know exactly who that is. The check for the uh, earnest money will be picked up by a courier from title and the option money, we have several options now. So I keep saying check because that's the, you know, kind of standard way to do it. But um, we can use things like PayPal, Venmo, or I can pick up the check, take it for you, or you can mail it. So there's a lot of different options. We'll just sit down and figure out what is easiest for you and the seller, make sure we both agree on it. And that's what we will do. And then, um, okay, so. Well, um, now that you're talking about those fees, we're, I'm gonna backtrack a little bit here. And um, the appraisal fee. So we have the appraisal fee paid up front you will actually get an email from us and it's going to have you pay online for your appraisal and that's when you'll then schedule your appraisal online to come out and, and do the appraisal as well as the inspections mm -hmm. the inspections are paid if you choose to do inspections we recommend them um, those are also paid up front and so you'll have to bring your checkbook when you have the house inspected you'll bring your checkbook with you and pay at that time so yes, yes. just wanted to reiterate that because I think I, know, I left that out earlier. And so that's just going back to, we talked about the upfront cost right away that, you know, a lot of people think it's just down payment, but it's not. It's option fee, earnest money, appraisal, home inspection. Um, those are things that we need upfront in the, really in the first probably 15 days of the contract, if not 10. Um, those are things that, that happen pretty quickly. And so once we have talked about repairs, we've asked for them, then the seller has the option to, before we're out of option period, we need to talk with the seller. So they can either um, do the repairs that we asked for. We can ask for money in lieu of repair. So say um, you wanna use a specific company for the roof, or you know maybe you, you work for an AC company and you wanna use, you want to use a specific company versus saying, Hey, I want the AC service. Say, Hey, I want $500 in, in lieu of the HVAC um, servicing. So that's an option. Or you can walk away. Say the inspection report is just, it's horrible. You know, there's, there's stuff that you just do not want to mess with. You know, the sellers won't cover it either. This is when you have the right to walk away and you will get your um, earnest money back. So once we're out of that option period, um, 
unless for some reason you don't get the, we have that financing contingency, if you walk away at any other point during that contract, except the option period, you lose that earnest money, which is 1% of the contract. So um, it's really important that we negotiate with those repairs. And um, even if you get cold feet, 10 day option period, that's when you make that decision because then you're protected still. And a lot of people, so like she said, the 10 days, you have that 10 days to walk away for any reason and you get your earnest money back. Um, the appraisal. So if the appraisal, there's that, that finance window too. So if the appraisal doesn't come back uh, for value, that is where you have to go back and reevaluate and Amanda will go back and negotiate with the seller and y'all try to come up with a price of, you know, can, or is a seller gonna bring this house price down for, to appraise value so that you can get the funding because we can only fund what the house appraises for. So, um, so that's where that 21 day comes in financing. financing. So it's 11 days long, it's 11 days more after that 10 day option period. Numbers, everybody, numbers. <laughs> yes, and, and don't worry, we will be calling you, we'll be emailing you. So we have these time frames down in our in our brain. We, I mean, it's, it's you know. We have calendars everywhere, believe us. Yes. I mean, like we have it all written on calendars, reminders, so that nothing is missed. And we're constantly telling you like, this is when this is happening, this, you know. Yeah. This is tomorrow. And, and so that is one of our roles for you is to make sure that you do not miss any of those deadlines. Um, we will we will update you. We will call you everything um, to make sure that does not happen. And so now that we're kind of, we've covered, um, we're out of that option period. So now we're going to start looking at home warranty options and homeowner's insurance. Okay, so home warranty. I will provide you with three different companies that you can choose from, and there's different plans within each company. So a good way to kind of figure out um, you know, what plan you want is in the contract, typically we've asked the sellers to pay for one year worth of warranty. Um, I always usually write it up around 550, and so you have $550 to choose from one of those plans. Now you can choose a plan that say is 699, just know that you will have to cover that difference. Um, and so I will send you the brochures, look through them, kind of see what best fits you, um, see what the what they cover, um, you know, what fees they charge to send people out, everything like that, and just find the best one for you. Um, and so I will get that ordered for you as soon as you tell me. And now Sean is going to kind of talk about a uh, homeowner's insurance. Yeah, so homeowner's insurance is also something that you get to shop for. We give you a quote of what it, or an estimate of what it might be, but this is when you start shopping for it. And we'll give you some uh, some agents that we work with, and or you may have your own, and you're more than welcome to let us know who they are. And so you'll shop for that homeowner's insurance, and then you'll just send us the, um, we call it the binder, and you'll just send us the statement from them and um, so that we know how much to add in on our end for your homeowner's insurance. So now that she's kind of talked about your um, homeowner's insurance, we have the appraisal ordered. Um, we've we've done pretty much everything. We're almost there. She's going to talk about the underwriting stage. So your uh, file is an underwriting, and they are balancing things out, making sure that we have the documents, making sure that we have done verification of employment, and especially right now, verification of employment is really critical, making sure that everybody sells their jobs and they're getting paid what they're supposed to. And so we have that going on, and when we when we get back from underwriting, there might be conditions, and we'll reach out to you and let you know, hey, there's these little, you know, there may have been like a little gap in working that we didn't realize, that you didn't realize. And so um, they'll come back with that and we'll just have to have like letters of explanation maybe or, but sometimes it's just a smooth process. Everything looks great and we've had, we get from start to finish and we're done and we get the clear to close. And the clear to close is ah, clear to close. Okay, that is what everyone wants to hear. So clear to close, kind of explain a little bit of what that is. So the clear to close is basically that everything is in line your documents are in line your contract's good and you are ready to go to that closing table and sign your documents and so your funds are being ordered for your house um your close so sorry let me back up a little bit so title here's where another partner comes in title and my closer have been going back and forth talking and they've been balancing out all those fees and all those sheets and that's why i say when you sign these documents and stuff they're estimates up until the point we get that final closing disclosure and that's when it will tell you how much you have to bring to closing and so clear to close is 
all the numbers match up on our end and on title's end, and the funds are gonna be ordered and sent over and we are ready to go. So three days before that closing date is when you will get the final disclosure and uh, final disclosures and they'll be sent out to you. And again, we'll go over them mm -hmm. line by line yeah. so that you can see where things have changed throughout the process. And you can see that we are moving in the right direction. And then on that, that night or that morning, depending on what time you're closing, we will have had the final disclosure, we will know how much money to bring with you, and a title, they will have all the documents from us, they will give you instructions on your wiring of your money, um, if you need to bring a cashier's check, and always take an extra checkbook with you, just in case. Sometimes there were a few dollars that were missed somewhere, and you'll need to write just a little check, Sometimes they actually have to, they owe you money back. It just, okay. it all depends. And so, I don't know. I think Amanda has something to add. Do you know? Okay, so now that we have the clear close, she's kind of explained um, the financial side. So either the day before or the day um, of closing, depending on when it's scheduled, we will do what's called a final walkthrough. And so what this is, we will go to the home, we'll walk through to make sure all the repairs are done. Now they should have sent us the receipts beforehand, but we wanna see in person. We wanna make sure um, everything's been done and that the house hasn't changed from the time you looked at it and we went under contract to now, that's huge. You know, If they went and knocked down a wall, guess what, we're not closing. We have to remedy that before. Um, and so when you go to closing, we will need, you'll have to know your social security. You will need a valid ID and the check amount with, um, with whatever amount it was that title gave you. And so when we are scheduling closing, I will reach out to title for you. You tell me a good time within that day and we will, um, we can both meet at the title company. Sean will be there as well. And we will sit there and go over all the things needed for, for closing. And it's very important to remember at closing, your, your loan has been what we call table funded, meaning that the money has already been transferred over to the title company and they're waiting for you to sign the docs. And so when you're signing the docs, there will be a page that actually says stop and has a stop sign on it. And that will be the time that they take the, pap the papers you've signed and we've sent them back to our, our company and they have they're you're checking them over making sure everything's good and they're releasing the funds once you sign that paperwork you're done we can hand you the keys there you can go celebrate in your new home um and so and enjoy it and enjoy it. make memories uh it, this is another stopping point where we just want to say one thank you for sticking with us to this whole whole webinar um i know it's been a lot of information and we want to know do you have any questions now is there um you know, is there something that we might have missed or something you didn't understand? Now would be the point to put that in the in the chat box below. So now this is the point where you get the keys and you can just go and enjoy the home and make Fun. memories. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, it's been a long 30 to 45 days. You, you've done amazing. Um, and guys, thanks for sticking with us. You know, we had so much fun today. I hope you learned a lot. Absolutely. And now, so here's the part where, this is the fun part. This is when you get to go buy that new car after you close, yes. after we funded, like yes. wait two days, three days. Then you can go buy that new car or that new furniture to, to furnish your house. And so that's, that's the fun part. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and so again, if you have any questions, put it in the chat box below or just reach out to us. You know, our goal here is to educate you. I don't care if um, you're going to buy a house next week or in six years. We are here to answer your questions. We're going to stick by you. We want, we want to be your realtor and your lender for life. Um, and so again, you know, reach out to us. We, we just appreciate you being here and um, we're here to answer all of your questions. Absolutely. And remember, it's never too early to start. Yes. That's a question that we get a lot is, when do I start this process? Now is when you start. All right. Thanks, well, thank you guys. We'll talk to you soon. And guys, thank you for bearing with us. Um, we are working moms. We do this because we love what we do and we also love our family. So this is, um, this is kind of our why. So yes. if you've heard any crazy noises in the background, this would be why. <laughs> Look at him go. Thanks guys for sticking with us. We appreciate it.